Hey guys, and welcome to another Titan Tries. This time, we're going to be looking at a game that the game's librarian has sent me. This is Castlevania Curse of Darkness. Now, I've only extremely recently gotten into the Castlevania series, and the only one that I've really played is, would be Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And I really, really enjoyed that game. Now... I don't know a massive amount about the series, however I know they didn't necessarily transition into 3D that well, but we've got a 3D game to take a look at today. Curse of Darkness, yes. Now it wasn't the first um, 3D Castlevania game, that pleasure goes to, I believe it was called Castlevania 64, and that game was put up against Symphony of the Night in early promotional uh, materials quite a lot and you know I still remember the, um, the the fanboyism around the time saying oh you know the PlayStation is getting a old 2D style game and the N64 is getting a fancy state of the art 3D game and yeah yeah, how did that how did that work out? <laughs> anyway, so in recent years, there's there's some been some talk that the uh, N64 version isn't as bad as people originally thought. But you know, I can't speak on that because I've never played it. So here we have a synopsis of the game. Castlevania Curse of Darkness is an action-adventure game that is part of the Castlevania franchise. Shocking, right? Set in the year 1479, three years after the events of Castlevania III, Dracula's Curse. Never played that one. The game follows Hector, a devil forge master who once served Dracula but left to live a peaceful life among humans. After his fiancée, Rosalie, is falsely accused of witchcraft and executed, Hector learns that her death was orchestrated by his rival, Forge Master Isaac. Seeking revenge, Hector returns to the dark world he abandoned to confront Isaac and the curse that Dracula left behind. So, after doing a little bit of research on this game, the story does seem to be the weakest part, and that is because not much of the story is actually explained in the game. Um, they actually released a short comic which explains the characters, the lead up, and the base background story for the game, which I don't understand why. Uh, game companies do this. It is a terrible idea. Uh, Halo did this with Halo 2 and 3, and it's infuriating. You know, if you need to read a book and watch a film and, you know, do some research on the internet to understand what's going on in your video game, you're probably doing something somewhere wrong. Anyway... Uh, apparently this game, you know, didn't, wasn't overly favorable with the fans when it came out, but it's one of those games that has also got a bit of a cult following, uh, in recent times, which after doing some research is why I decided to take a look and the fact that Chris sent it to me as well. So development, the game was developed by Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo and released in 2005. It was the second 3D Castlevania title following Castlevania Laminant of Innocence. Unlike pre previous protagonists from the Belmont clan, Hector does not wield the vampire killer whip but instead uses a variety of weapons, including swords, spears, axes and even firearms. The game features a more complex action-adventure style gameplay similar to Symphony of the Night and Aria of Sorrow. Aria of Sorrow is one that I keep hearing about. That's one that I really want to play. Players can also play as Trevor Belmont in an extra gameplay mode after finishing the main game. Interesting. Yeah, I've heard this game has um, 
very complex and deep mechanics as well. So, reception. Castlevania Curse of Darkness received mixed reviews upon its release. Critics praised the combat system, music, content, and replay value. However, the game was criticized for its story, characters, repetitive level design, and gameplay. Despite the mixed reception, the game is remembered for its unique take on the Castlevania formula and its contribution to the series lore. Huh. This title remains a distinctive entry in the Castlevania series, offering a blend of traditional action-adventure elements with deep narrative centred around revenge and redemption. Well, okay. I think it's about time we actually take a little look at this. Don't you? So, let's spark up the old Xbox and take a gander. I have um, had a few minutes on this game previously just because I had to copy it over now I apparently have no audio which is curious let's go to options a minute one second and audio Issues fixed. Cool. So, again, this game has absolutely, like, superb music. Similar to Symphony of the Night. Now, I don't think it's quite as iconic as that Symphony of the Night prayer um, on the loading screen. That is one of my favorite pieces of video game music ever. And probably one of the most recognizable musical tracks uh, in the entire franchise but anyway new game so we're gonna call this TT just for shits and gigs and then we're gonna accept is this correct yes now this game actually looks fantastic as well so there we go so yes we played 20 minutes of this game before we're gonna overwrite that that's fine now, although I've played 20 minutes of this, I don't really know what was going on. <laughs> 1476, Relatia. A great war raged between Dracula and humanity. Just when it seemed that there was no hope for mankind to prevail, out of the darkness and despair, a champion arose. A true-blooded vampire hunter named Trevor Belmont. Belmont and his comrades triumphantly slew Lord Dracula. A truly glorious victory for all. However, the evil one did not pass from this world in silence. With his final words, Lord Dracula left a demonic curse that enshrouded all of Europe in misery and torment. Ravaged by hideous plague and dire famine, the people's hearts turned black and murderous. The weak were slain without pity, while the land was pillaged and scourged without remorse. Three years have passed since the death of Lord Dracula, and the invocation of Dracula's curse. Charging battery. Well, that sounds pretty bleak and dark. Dark times, apparently, those dark ages. Show yourself, Isaac. I know you're here. Is that you? I finally tracked you down. <laughs> you tracked me down. <laughs> I was the one who lured you here. Hector, the fool who betrayed our Lord Dracula. That matters not. I've come to exact my revenge upon you. 
for the death of Rosalie! Oh, and how will you have this revenge? <laughs> when you are utterly at my mercy, you relinquished your powers. You couldn't even protect your own woman. And now you think to defeat me? <laughs> Lord Dracula is gone, but his powers are still here in Valacia. Even you must realize. Devil forging. Indeed, with this the most forbidden of arts, a wisp of conjured matter can be transformed into a hellish devil. There are but two humans who possess this magnificent power. You and I. <laughs> yes, to our lasting shame. But I shed that evil power. Never again will I use it. Ah, uh, but you will, Hector, and soon you have no choice. Without it, I could crush you in an instant. But that wouldn't be very satisfying, now would it? You deserve a most gruesome fate for the humiliation you brought upon me three years ago. Bereft of the power of devil forging, you cannot hope to pursue me. That is why you will reclaim your powers and thence follow where I lead you. <clears throat> but in the end, the glorious vengeance you seek will not be yours. It will be mine. <laughs> <laughs> Claim that accursed power once more. Heed my words. I will hunt you down like the beast you are. I will have my revenge. So, and that's how the game starts. It's not overly clear what's going on, apart from the fact that we play as a guy called Hector who is a devil forger who gave up his powers for some reason. And uh, I might say that Hector looks badass and awesome. Uh, really happy with, um, you know, our hero here. Uh, Isaac, on the other hand, I don't know what's going on with him. It, I, if I didn't know that it... His name was Isaac. I would have thought that that was a woman, but okay. Definitely has some serious femdom energy going on. Anyway, we're here to reclaim our powers and exact revenge on our friends because we're the only two that have this power and we gave ours up for reasons. Anyway, let's go into the castle and start doing some damage. This game runs at a beautiful 60 frames a second as well. Absolutely gorgeous. Evening, sweet cheeks. Look at this fella. This fella's uh, not in the mood for talking, I see. Well, that's okay. We have sword. We also have a block mode. And somehow, we can dodge. I got a feeling we can't dodge yet though because the game hasn't explained it to us or I've just forgotten how to do it. Anyway, that was an executioner. He's now going to burn to death in fiery glory. What is this? A memorial ticket warps to last registered save point. Um, okay. I'm not 100% sure what that does. I'm guessing warps to the last save point. I'm guessing if we die... Or, unless it's like the library um, tickets in Symphony of the Night. And they'll just literally warp us, like for an emergency, for instance. Now, I'm guessing these save points, which look absolutely amazing, by the way. Uh, I guess these restore all of our health and everything. Now, this game is more like an action RPG than anything else, but it has some really deep crafting mechanics 
uh, from what I can understand. Um, however, I have heard, or I did watch a couple of videos on this game, uh, explaining that there is a crafting system where you have to get items from enemies and steal items, which can be a little bit tricky and a little bit difficult. Uh, but you actually need certain items to craft the best weapons in the game and you can get yourself into a situation where you're kind of boned towards the end of the game if you haven't harvested the right materials. I don't know how true that is, but you know, it's something that I saw and we have a level 4 merman who, well, isn't much to write home about. Now there is this interesting effect on the side of the screens as well, which you can see. Um, I thought my Xbox was being a bit weird, but no, apparently that's just how this game is. I don't know if it was like that on the PS2. I'm not really sure. But if we um, go into our map here, we have an abandoned castle, which we are 7.33% all the way through. I'm guessing there are different maps in this game and we can 100% explore each map and then move on or maybe we can come back to old previous areas uh, with newer powers, that kind of thing. I'm not really sure. But I'm interested to find out, so let me tell you. So we have a potion. Something fits into this door. Well, we don't have anything that could possibly fit in that door apart from a potion, so I guess we're going to head back and check out the other areas. I wonder if we're going to get any more mermen. It's not a huge amount of enemies. I thought they would be, um, you know, chasing us down. I guess if we actually go out of our way to hunt and look for them, a few turn up. Hey, and we got a level up. Now, I'm not sure how integral level ups are to us, or whether it's... Yeah, we we definitely can't dodge, which is really curious. I guess you can't dodge until the game tells you. Um, yeah, so Symphony of the Night, obviously leveling up was very important, but you got huge buffs from your equipment as well, which could probably carry you a little bit. So I'm guessing the equipment situation is similar. Ooh, we have skeletons, eh? And there we go, we're starting to collect some of these um, items that we can create and upgrade weapons with. Which is a system that I'm really curious to get into. I'm certainly going to be playing through this game at some point. I don't know whether I'm going to do it for the channel or whether I'm just going to play it for myself. I haven't decided yet. But uh, this, this gameplay is silky smooth. Ooh, looks like we've got a room full of bad nicks this time. Quick step. I don't know what any of this nonsense is that's coming up on the bottom of the screen. Ooh, okay. Ah, right, that was the quick step. So that's actually an item. So now we can kind of lock onto enemies, which we couldn't do before, apparently. And if we block, yeah, now we can do the uh, dodging ability. I was curious that that's actually something that we need to pick up. Still, no matter. We have it now. So we can block and move out of the way. And we can lock onto enemies, which I'm guessing is going to make things a lot easier. Especially if we're going to get firearms. I actually really like this castle design. Really cool. Loading seems to be fast. No hitches with the gameplay, at least not so far. I mean, I don't think this game is necessarily giving the uh, Xbox a workout. The characters look pretty good, to be honest with you. But the environments look oof, almost, you know, N64 Dreamcast style. But that's fine. The game is smooth, and I think it's um, achieving what it set out to achieve. So. Music's okay. Not up to Castlevania Symphony of the Night, but it it's there. It's um, a bit faster and more kind of action orientated than I would have thought. Anyway, let's keep exploring and see if we can find something to put in a hole. I don't think these skeletons have anything to put in a hole. In fact, they're probably lacking any kind of fleshy stuff. Right, let's go in 
here and we find another safe spot. Well, I like the way he sits as well. It's kind of like Leon from uh, Resident Evil 4 when you can sit in Sadler's chair. And he adopts the uh, evil McEvil pose. Right, let's go. So apparently, like, a playthrough of this game will take you anywhere from 15 to 30 hours, depending on how much you want to grind everything out. So it's a pretty meaty game. And with all the weapons and equipment, obviously, there's lots of replay value to it. I would assume, anyway, you know. Ooh, what is this? Abandoned castle map. An overall map of the area, lacking in finer details. Alright. I mean, I guess that just filled the map out. I guess if there are any secrets or whatever on this map, they won't be illustrated. But at least we have a rough idea of how big this castle is. And this lock-on feature is really nice. Come here, Fenrir. Allow me to skin you, beast. Okay. Yeah, I'm really curious about that effect on the edge of the screen there, though. I'm going to be honest, I don't like it. It's kind of giving me a headache. But I don't know if that's just in the beginning of the game or what. Bit odd. It almost gives this, uh, like, a dreamlike kind of effect, I suppose. Maybe that's what they were going for. Right, okay. Just a couple more skelly bags. Ooh. Ooh, we leveled. Nice. Uh-oh. Hang on. Why can't we... Why can't we dodge? Yeah, so there's also combos that you can do. Because the only attack button is the X button. But if you push uh, the B button at random intervals, you kind of do combos. Right, there we go. I'm not sure why that wasn't working for a minute. I don't know if these skeletons are going to continuously spawn in. Hopefully we can get rid of these guys. And then just worry about whatever the hell that guy is. There we go. Nice try, son. Whoop. Whoop, he's swinging his axe around. Just because he can, I suppose. Whoop, whoop. Ooh, he got me on the back shot there. It's a bit rude. Ah, well, he's dead now. Burning up in a glaze of... A glaze? <laughs> Burning up in a glaze of glory. Yeah, that works. Uh, okay, so. Which way are we heading? The map is rather nice, I have to say. However, the camera angles are a little bit perplexing. Sealed by an unknown power, Hector cannot open it with his... Strength alone, with his strength alone, huh? Charge complete. All right, well. Let's keep moving forwards. Power. Is it coming from that tombstone? <laughs> How conscientious of him. He carved the instructions into stone along with the most difficult visualization. So, that's how badly he wants me to regain my powers. Very well. Heed my words, O oh great powers of darkness. Release to me the tortured souls. Let me infuse him with my life force and awaken him to the world of the living. Immaculate being, appear before me now! And we get a little fairy thing. Cool, I guess. Devil forging, isn't it? Never seen that before. Quite impressive. It's enough to make your blood run cold. Mm. Who are you? Oh, my apologies, my lord. I should have offered an introduction. 
I go by Zed. I'm here Zed. for one purpose only. To purify this land of the pestilent curse which infects it. I see. You, on the other hand, are pursuing the other Devil Forge Master, are you not? The one you seek fled toward the chapel on the other side of the mountain. He made his escape through the back of the castle. What concern is this to you? He is the one protecting the curse. Ergo, he is an impediment to me and to all those who abide in this land. I see. Very well. I, Hector, thank you for your help. Now, if you'll forgive me, I must be on my way. So, we're not an evil sort, it would appear. An innocent devil infant fairy appears. Alright. Uh, I guess we can name it if we wanted. So, innocent devils, IDs. Innocent devils are the mystical, untainted familiars created by devil forge masters. Innocent devils have absolute loyalty to their creator. Summoned IDs may grant status enhancements to Hector. Status enhancements can be examined on the status screen. Innocent Devils use hearts as energy whenever they take damage or use a special ability. Their heart energy will decrease. If they lose all their hearts, the ID will revert to soul form. At that point, they will simply hover around Hector. If Hector gathers enough hearts, the ID soul can then be restored to material form. Innocent Devils cannot die. Innocent Devils level up with experience points by defeating enemies just like Hector. When an enemy is defeated, either by Hector or the ID, both Hector and his ID will gain experience. An ID must be summoned for it to receive any experience points, however. To truly succeed, level up both Hector and his innocent devils. Bloody hell. Okay. Push up or down direction button to change the AI setting of the ID. Setting the mode to auto instructs the ID to act on its own. In auto mode, the ID's manner of attack and use of special abilities are directed or dictated by its own reasoning. Setting the mode to command allows Hector to directly control the ID's actions in command mode. The ID tends to stick closer to Hector and targets the same enemy that Hector is battling. In this mode, innocent devils will not use special abilities that consume hearts unless they are told to do so. To use an ID special ability, select the ability with the left or right directional button and press the ability button to activate it. Use these two modes effectively to make battles easier for Hector. Characteristics of fairy type innocent devils tend to float around the player. They have the ability to open up treasure chests. They can also restore HP or heal status elements. Okay. So, using the D-pad here, and man, am I glad to be using the Retro Fighters Hunter. <laughs> Not putting up with the shitty D-pad on the original Xbox. So we'll leave him on auto and he can heal us, level 1. So that's kind of like the familiars from Symphony of the Night, I suppose. Only, you know, a lot more to it. I'm guessing we can now open this treasure chest. Which contains a dragon crest. A crest made from a carved dragon bone. Looks like it should be placed into something. Somewhere. Hmm. Well, isn't that a kawinky dink? Because earlier we discovered... A door. That wanted something to be placed within. I also like the hearts in this game. They kind of look like crystals. Really cool. So, is this game fun? Well, I'm having a blast with it. If this is... Oh, our ID leveled up. So if this is kind of, you know, the quality that we can expect from the 3D Castlevania games, I mean, I'm down. I kind of like this hack and slash uh, RPG sort of style, to be honest with you. I would probably get into this. I don't know when I'm going to play it, mind, because... The backlog, <laughs> she is large, and game, pa game pass is doing me no favors at all. 
In fact, I've been trying to complete... What have, you, what have I been playing recently outside of recording? Um, I have been playing Dead Island 2, which I've been playing for the last three weeks. <laughs> and I actually managed to finish it last night. Well, I say finish it. I managed to finish the story. Apparently, I'm only 73% of the way through the game. I've still got a couple of side quests and things to do. And then I need to move on and start playing something else. But what would be the question? Maybe I'll play this. Who knows? Right, so we can hit up the save spot, but there's no real need to do so. Let's keep making our way back to the door. Might grab some levels along the way. And at least we have our fairy now that's going to heal us if we take damage. That's pretty cool. I'm guessing we're going to have some kind of big boss fight. So, uh, full disclaimer, I haven't played this far into the game. Um, I believe I got up to unlocking the ID. And that was it. I don't think I actually went through the door at the end. I could be wrong. But I don't think so. Let's kill Mr. Fenrir. Now, if I may be so, so bold, I do wish that we could move a little bit quicker. I think some of these corridors are very large. But, you know, a minor gripe, I guess. Ooh, lots of skelly bags. I don't know if we're going to get a look at the crafting system in this video. We're collecting lots of bronze. In fact, if we go into... The, ah, yeah, so we've still got... So we've got weapon, head, armor, and accessories one and two, I guess. Summons. Infant fairies. See, I know you can also enhance and upgrade uh, innocent devils. Okay. And you can evolve them into different beasts. I don't want to say like Pokemon, but like Pokemon. Okay. Yeah, I would say the lead platform for this game was definitely the PlayStation 2, just looking at it. But we don't mind such things. Not if the game is smooth and fluid. And it is. Okay. Now, I don't know how mazy the game is either. I suppose we better go save it because we don't know what's through this door. I don't know how mazy the game is. Is it going to be one of those games where you get lost? Or is it all pretty linear? I don't know. I mean, Symphony of the Night was fine. Um, that was fairly linear. Uh, but it was certainly one of those games where you had to kind of know what you were doing. Otherwise, you would be walking around aimlessly. But I really enjoyed that game. I think I'm trying to remember how many times. I think I've done Symphony of the Night three times now. So I'm fairly confident. I don't know every secret there is to know about that game. But I can get through it pretty pretty easily. Hey, we've got another level up. So level ups are coming um, pretty fast, to be honest. However, they did in symphony as well until you get to a certain point where enemies just completely stop giving you experience oh here we go Ooh, what the tea and biscuits is that ah oh, it's only another level two executioner i'm not gonna worry too much about him he's done already damn not much in the tank anymore is there And I keep pushing the wrong button to dodge as well. 
I keep wanting to push um, RB, but it's actually the trigger. Now, what is that? Oh, it's a beastery. Contains information about the monster that Hector has battled. Okay. Ah. Human bones reanimated as a monster by evil magic. Slow moving, but equipped to kill. Pure blood merman. Attacks by ramming or shooting water from its mouth. Also found on dry land. Okay. That's cool to have. I do like beast trees. Now, are we going the right way? I guess so. Ooh. Ghosts, eh? Curious. Ghosts that float. Well, I mean, I imagine most ghosts float, to be honest. Where are you, foul demon? There you be. Oh, I see. When they die, their soul kind of leaves their body. In spectacular fashion. I like the way when you um, push the map button, it does spring up pretty quickly. Quite happy with that. You know, after Silent Hill, um, running through that recently. That game takes a long time to load the map. And your inventory, for that matter. Which doesn't seem like a big deal, it only takes like a second or two, but when you're going in and out of it fairly often, it is frustrating. Okay, so we've got a... Ah, so that's a save room. Should we go for a save room? Sure. I don't know if it's worth having multiple saves. I'm not sure with this sort of game. I don't know if there's any kind of new game plus mode or anything like that. Any of that nonsense. Right. So, let's keep going. Certainly, uh... Ooh, okay. So, it's opening up a little bit. And we just found a dollar. Wait, can we destroy these? Ah, we can destroy these, apparently. That's interesting. So I wonder if it's just money we can find. We have a wild memory, whatever one of those is. Still. So we can destroy those. Curious. Alright, well, let's take this door. Which leads to not much, apparently. Just more skeletons. That's fine. And more doggies. Those doggies look pretty good, to be fair. But I quite like the skeleton design, too. It's not very cartoony. Which I can appreciate. So what's through here? I don't know why some rooms are green. Maybe that means something. Ah, oh, this is cool. I mean, it's kind of a waste if you ask me, but that is immensely satisfying. <laughs> Smashing those barrels. Cool. Maybe if it's green, it's like a bonusy item room. Certainly have another potion and aluminium. A very light metal used by some alchemists, but mostly unknown. Makes very light armor. Well, seems like something that we need. Cool. Let's head back out. So this was just a loot room then. Yeah, so we can smash these things, but they don't really hold much for us. Unfortunately. And those Fenrirs are getting a little bit stronger. At least they feel a little bit stronger than they were. Ah, more dogs. Almost look like something out of Final Fantasy, to be honest. 
So these wild memories, I'm guessing they're some kind of material that we can use. Now there is kind of like a complicated um, stealing mechanic in this game, <clears throat> which we haven't unlocked yet. But that's how you get the best items, apparently. And that involves jumping at an enemy or something and hitting a certain button at a certain time. And uh, it can be quite frustrating to use. But we may or may not see that in this video. Come on, level five doggies. Put you all to the sword. Rabid hounds. Taste my sword. Hey. ID leveled up. Where's this going? Okay. So we are actually going somewhere new. Or is this just going to link up again? Link round. Yep, that just links round. Alright. <laughs> That's kind of us. So now we have a long run back to where we were. Yeah, I wish there was like a quicker sprint or something we could do. Maybe there's fast travel later on in the game. I'm not sure. So, ooh. Ah. Is this one of those Zelda rooms where you've got to kill all the enemies? Yep, looks like it. So all enemies have to be slain. Souls. Ooh. Okay, the music's changed to an ominous track here, or it was ominous before it became more upbeat and fast paced. Well, that's okay. I would say we should be a little bit better with the old defense mechanics, but at the same time, it doesn't seem to matter that much. Come on, hound. Don't be like this. We're putting down quite a few rabid dogs today. Is that it? So what do we get for that? I'm guessing... Not much. We didn't even... Do we not like, unlock a chest or anything? Alright, that was just a room full of enemies. Cool. I guess. So what are we on? We're on 42% of the castle so far. So the maps are... Uh, well, at least this map is significantly shorter. Oh. Hello. Okay. Skill weapon combining. It is possible to create new weapons and armor by combining various materials together. Choose combine from the status window to go to the combination screen. Combining can be performed at any time. As weapons and armor increase, more combinations will be possible. When you find new materials, check the combination list to see if something new is available. It is also useful to check the beastry to see which monsters possess certain materials. Interesting. So there we go. So we can create a new sword. So short sword, attack plus 10. Is that what we've already got? Um, yeah, so that's what we've already got. Okay. So. Right. So we just made another sword, basically. Ah, it's okay to create. I see. 
Right, so we need the short sword and the aluminium to create that. And that creates the combine sword, which... Oh no, it creates the foil, but it still only does the same amount of damage. Well... We can create a leather helmet. And... Le soft leather armor. Okay, I mean, that's better than nothing, I suppose. Puts her armor up by two points. That does a little bit more. So the foil, that's interesting. So the foil actually seems to do the same sort of damage. Okay. Ah. Ooh. That's cool. Alright. So we're making our own way. Smashing the place to pieces. Voss is das. So, ID evolution crystal. When some monsters are defeated, they drop evolution crystals. That affects the development of your ID. By collecting a certain amount of evolution crystals, giving them uh, to your ID, its form will change. There are various types of evolution crystals. The type of evolution crystal that is dropped will change depending on the weapon Hector is using. Okay, so swords act... Okay, that kind of makes sense. So swords are red, axes are blue, so it's the same colour as the actual weapon. It is possible to prevent evolution crystals from appearing whilst using an ID. This will allow the ID to level up its current form on the summon screen. Okay. Alright, well, I mean, it certainly seems like this game's throwing a lot of mechanics at us. Getting somewhat complex. Interesting. So I'm guessing we do just want to keep leveling this guy up. We've got some zombies. Looks like these guys aren't dropping any of these evolution crystals for us. Bit cheeky. Bit naughty. Okay. More s zombies? We need fire for zombies, surely. Oh, hello. Zombies are slow. Oh, hello. Not quite sure how those guys just randomly spawned on top of me, but curious. Oh, that's how the command works. Got ya. I understand things about stuff. Honest, I do. Ooh. These guys look... Ah, they're wizards. I was going to say, they look similar but different. Evo crystals. There we go. So I guess the best way of playing this really would be to grind out crystals and then maybe look at a wiki to see what evolves into what. Ah, look at these guys. These guys have had a bit of a bad time. More skeletons. Okay, so they do drop Evo crystals. I'm guessing the drop rate is just relatively low, but that could be based on some kind of stat as well. Depending on what you're fighting, etc. Yeah, because they're kind of dropping a few now. So I'm guessing you don't just give the crystals to the ID. I'm guessing as long as they can generate crystals, if that setting is active, as soon as you pick them up, the ID just kind of hoovers them up like a big old green hoover. Which 
say a big old greedy hoover. Right, let's get rid of you. I'm wondering if there's some kind of boss that we're working our way towards. Not really sure. Oh, he pukes. It's not very nice. Dirty bastard. We are rapidly approaching that owl mark now. And there's a lot of blood stained along these halls. Well, it's either blood or it's wine. Ooh, music's changed. And these guys are just standing there staring at me. Okay, it's not it's not creepy at all. Oh, hello. The hell are you guys? Oh. Thank you, fairy, for healing me. Skeleton Blaze. Alright. Yeah, these things are certainly a little bit stronger. Oh wow. Certainly stronger. But that's okay. We can handle a few of these monstrous buffoons. Weep before the scythe. Ah, oh, these are just zombies. What happened to the cool blazy skeletons? I was enjoying them. Okay. This is, is kind of like a battle room. Oh. I see. Right, in the interest of time, guys, I think I'm going to have to leave this one here. We've played about an hour of it. Give or take. Um, I like this. This is cool. This isn't what I think of when I think of Castlevania, I'm going to be honest. But considering I don't know that much about Castlevania anyway, I can't really... Um, I guess I can't really make those sort of assumptions, but this game is fun. I'm, I would be interested to see what else it has to offer, what the other environments look like. I'm guessing we're not going to be in this castle forever, considering we're, you know, nearly 60% of the way through it. I'm assuming each area is going to have like a boss and then we're going to move on to the next area. But I don't know whether we're going to be able to come back or not. The music is interesting. I don't think it's quite on the same level as Symphony. And this game also has a hell of a lot of mechanics that I think are going to take some learning uh, <laughs> and studying if you're really going to sit down and play this. But for what it is, man, it plays well. It feels good. It's got a great art design. But, you know, the, the environments are a little bit little bit dated, should we say, a little bit low effort. But the actual character models and the enemies look great. And it's fast as well, and it's fluid, which is good. So anyway, I enjoyed that, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, till next time.